Okay, I have an admission. I hate thermodynamics. It was one of those things that always confused me in university and it might confuse you too. So let's try and make sense of it all. Let's start off with the first law of thermodynamics and that is Q equals U. You might see a delta in front of that plus W. Now what are all these? Well, these are all energies. This rule is true for gases, so we need to be thinking about these energies in terms of gases. So, if you have a gas and you put heat into it, you heat a gas, that is what this Q is, heat supplied to gas. That's fairly easy, but you know that if you supply heat to a gas, well, the particles are going to move faster, and if a gas is contained, well, great, but if it's free to move and expand or whatever, then it is going to exert a force, and so that's what this is. This W indicates work done by gas. Now, if work is done by gas, then that means that it's losing some of that energy. And so even though you're supplying maybe 10 joules of heat to a gas, the gas might then be doing eight joules of work. And so it's not keeping all 10 joules of that heat. What's happened to the extra two joules left over? Well, that is turned into, well, kinetic energy of the particles of the molecules that make up the gas. But we just say that this is gain or rather change. If it's positive, it's a gain in internal energy. And we know that that is proportional, that's dependent on temperature, isn't it? So if you supply heat to a gas, then it will do some work and so will not keep all of that heat, but it will keep some of that heat, some of that energy in the form of kinetic energy, internal energy of the molecules. Now that might make sense, but the difficulty is knowing how to apply that to different situations. Let's think about when a gas undergoes an isothermal change or process. Iso means same, thermal means, well, temperature basically. And so in this case, if the temperature is staying the same, then that means that the internal energy of the gas is not changing at all. So that means that the heat that you are supplying to the gas is all lost, as it were, by the gas again, by the work that it does. And knowing from thermal physics that PV is equal to NRT, if you don't know that, then have a look at my gas laws video. Then we can say that PV is proportional to T, or in other words, PV over T is a constant. So you can compare before and after PV over T equals PV over T. But we know that temperature is constant, and so that means that we can take it out of the equation. And so PV is equal to a constant as well. So we can say that P1V1 equals P2V2. I'll write that down in a second. Let's go for another one. Adiabatic, some people say adiabatic. I like saying adiabatic. That is when no heat is lost or gained by the gas at all. No heat is supplied to the gas and no heat is lost by the gas. And so if that's the case, we know that Q is equal to zero. So if we take Q out of the equation, put W over the other side or delta U over the other side, we know that the change in energy, internal energy, is gonna be equal to minus W. And that makes sense because if a gas does work, then that means that it has to lose energy and it has to be losing the energy from the internal energy of its particles. Now for this one we can also say that P1V1 is equal to P2V2. However, we have this little thing here that we raise the power of the volume by. This is called the adiabatic constant and you'll always be told what that is. That changes from gas to gas. For a monatomic gas, let's say argon, that's equal to five thirds. I'm going to add one thing in here as well. Work done by a gas, this is equal to zero if V is constant. So if a volume of a gas is constant, then by definition, it can't do any work. You think about it, work done is, well, force times distance. And so if a gas isn't expanding or contracting, then no work is being done on or by the gas. And of course, if work done is zero, then that means that all of the heat supplied is being turned into the internal energy of the gas. So Q equals delta U. There's one more thing that that is equal to P delta V. 
So pressure times the change in volume if constant pressure. So those are the four rules that you have to remember for thermodynamics before you get started with anything else. An isothermal change, that means that the change in internal energy is zero. So we can say PV equals PV. Adiabatic or adiabatic process, no heat supply. So that means internal energy is minus the work done. If volume is constant, work done is zero. If constant pressure, work done is P delta V. What you can do is draw a graph of P against V and show what is happening to both pressure and volume for a gas during a change. Let's start off with our isothermal compression. Well, we know that it's a constant temperature and so therefore P and V are, well, they're inversely proportional, aren't they? So if T constant, P is inversely proportional to V and so we get this shape graph. Now, whichever way the pressure and volume are going, we draw an arrow showing which way it's going. So here we go, what's going on here? Well, the volume of the gas is decreasing, the pressure is increasing. So this is an isothermal, because it's happening at a constant temperature, compression. If the arrow was going the other way, isothermal expansion, and it would be just exactly the same line with the arrow going in the opposite direction, pretty much anyway. Now, what about if this happened at a different temperature though? If this gas was at a colder temperature, still a constant temperature, but at a colder temperature, then we know that the pressure and the volume would be less. And so basically the graph would look similar, but it gets closer to the origin. And so this would be colder temperature. Now we said that work done is equal to P delta V. And so times in pressure and volume together. So what part of this graph gives us work done on or by the gas? It's the area under the graph. So the area under the PV graph is equal to work done. However, you have to think clearly, and so I'm just doing it for the orange one here, the hotter temperature. You just got to think, is work being done or by the gas? Well, it's compressing, and so that means that work is being done on the gas. That's what a PV graph looks like for an isothermal change. What about an adiabatic change? Well, it's very similar. It's just the characteristic, really, of an adiabatic change is that it gets closer to zero pressure. Okay, so what if I had a PV graph and all I had was a straight line going up? So we can see that the volume is staying the same. Well, what do we say we know is the case if volume stays the same? No work is being done at all. So W equals zero, and so we can say that Q is equal to delta U. What about if I had a horizontal line? Well, that's a constant pressure, but change in volume and just like we said before, work done is equal to P delta V. So again, it is the area under the graph. Now you can see what I've done here is I've actually got two lines joined together, kind of like vectors in a way. And that's what happens usually when we have maybe an engine. We don't just have one process happening, we have lots of processes happening and they're all linked together. The gas undergoes work and then it undergoes no work, but the internal energy is changing, etc., etc. So let's have a look at a PV loop. So let's say that we have a gas here. And what we do, we do work on the gas like so. Let's say that it undergoes compression, could be isothermal, could be adiabatic. So work is done by the gas, and then it undergoes expansion, and then work is done on the gas. Keep drawing arrows at the end, you've got to draw them in the middle. And then finally it undergoes maybe isothermal compression, could be adiabatic. Let's extend this. So let's just have a look at the area under the graph for when the volume is increasing. So that's from here to here. So this area under the graph gives you work done by the gas. Okay, we can say a system, but I like to think about it, work done by the gas. Don't forget, if the volume is increasing, work is done by the gas. But then on the way back, when the volume is decreasing, we have this area under the graph. This is the work done on the gas or on the system. And so if we have this much work done by the gas and then this work done on the gas, then that means that we have a certain amount of network resultant work done by the gas. 
And this is kind of what happens with an engine. We're gonna look at specifically a four stroke engine. And that's usually what you have in your car. So what happens first of all is that, well, you probably know what happens. You have a piston inside a cylinder and that goes up and down. And what you can do is that you can suck in air and then you can exhaust the fumes out as well. And we have an explosion as it were happening inside of the cylinder. So what happens first is that the cylinder comes down and it comes down because it wants to suck in air and fuel into the cylinder ready to be combusted but the pressure isn't changing, it's just sucking the air in. So we represent that as just a straight line going across like that. Again, we can say that the work is the area under this line, we're not too concerned with that at the minute. Then what happens is that the piston is then pushed back upwards to compress the air and the fuel. And then halfway up, we have a spark, that's why we need spark plugs, and it causes combustion to happen. And usually the spark happens about, well, something like here. I thought I could draw sparks. Turns out I can't. And we see that sort of dog leg going on there because the pressure is increasing very rapidly. Of course, it can't stay like that, can it? Because if the pressure is too great and the piston's allowed to move, the piston's gonna come back down again. And that's what we see. But it doesn't come down exactly the same way because of course we know that happens only if it's the same temperature, but it's gonna be at a hotter temperature. So we're going to get further away from the origin like that. So this is compression, this is combustion, and then we have our expansion as it explodes. And that pushes the piston down, that's what drives your car. And then last but not least, the pistons down here, we have all the exhaust fumes still in the cylinder. We need to get rid of those. So that's what happens, the piston goes up one more time and pushes just all of the air out again. That's just at a constant pressure. And so we have a straight line going across there. That's supposed to be a straight line horizontally. As we push the gas out is at a slightly higher pressure than what we suck the air and fuel mixture in with. So there you go, that's an introduction to thermodynamics and PV diagrams. I hope that in my endeavor to unconfuse myself, I've hopefully unconfused you a little bit as well. If I have and you found this helpful, please leave a like. And if you think I've missed anything, you've got any questions, put it in a comment down below. And don't forget to check out the rest of my videos on my channel for more help. And I'll see you next time.